Hello, my super amazing 3G artists. If you are a distance learner full time for all five days, then you should be watching this video to help you finish the art project we started last week. If you're a hybrid learner, then you are going to do this with me in class. So you don't need to watch this video. All right. So if you have your stencil that you made last week, you need to have that handy. You also need to find a black piece of paper, which hopefully got sent home in your pile. Now, the first thing we're going to do is that we need to move the black paper out of the way so it doesn't get dirty and make sure you have uh, like a messy mat or a placemat or a scratch piece of paper, maybe some newspaper down because this is going to get kind of messy. The next thing you need is you need to have pastel chalks. Now, chalks are gonna work the best on this project. So if you have chalk, please use those. You might even use, be able to use sidewalk chalk if you have some of that um, left over from the summer. If you don't have chalk, then you can do your best to use marker or colored pencil or crayon, but you're going to have to use a different technique. You'll have to do this on, a, on like a white piece of paper and just trace around the buildings, and that will be a little different. So only do this technique if you have chalk. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to pick any color of chalk. And I, I do like picking the bright colors for this assignment. Um, so colors like the bright green and the bright orange, yellow is awesome for this project. Don't use white right now because we're gonna save white for the windows. Um, if you have some darker colors, they'll show up okay, but the bright colors will be the best. So the first thing you need to know is this piece of paper. This is your stencil. And this we're going to throw away after we're done with it. But this is where we draw with our chalk. We are not drawing with our chalk on the black paper. Not doing that. So outline the first building with a bright color of chalk. Doesn't matter what color you choose. I'm choosing green, but you can do what you want. Now, do you see how that's an outline? I got really close to the edge, but I didn't color all over the place to make a mess, okay? Now I'm gonna switch to another color for the next building. So I picked yellow, it's hard to see because my paper is yellow. Oh, and it's easy to accidentally wrinkle your paper, so just try to be gentle. And it's okay, if you see lots of like little um, chalk dust, little pieces of chalk, don't blow those away because you're gonna wanna use those when we transfer it to your black paper. So don't blow on those. All right, now I'm gonna switch to another color. I think I'll go with pink. Then switch again. I've got like a bright orange. Now this is such a skinny building that I'm just gonna chalk up the whole thing. And I might accidentally rip this one if I'm not careful. So be extra careful if your buildings are skinny. Now if you run out of bright colors, you can always um, you know, start over. Like I could do the green again here, but I'm gonna try red. I think red might be kind of cool. And don't forget these bottom parts here. And then my last building, let's see, I think I will, I think I'll use yellow again because yellow just looks really awesome on this artwork. So if there's any color you need to use twice, maybe make it yellow. It'll look great. Okay, so you've got this stencil all chalked up. Now your fingers are going to get a little messy. Don't worry about it yet because they're going to still get even messier. Okay, now bring your black paper over to your workspace. It should be in the horizontal or landscape position. Now it's important about where you place the stencil. The first placement we're gonna make is we're gonna take our tallest building and almost touch the top of the black paper. See how close it is? You can even touch the top if you want. Your tallest building should almost touch the top and then your left and right edges should be lined up perfectly with the black paper. Now, with one hand, you're gonna hold your building steady so you don't rip it. 
And with your other hand, now I'm left-handed, so I'm using my left pointer finger, but you're probably going to be using your right if you're right-handed. And you're going to do this technique. You're going to start on the stencil. You're going to rub the chalk onto the black paper. My advice is to only go one direction. Don't go back and forth because then you might rip your yellow, your, your paper. You might rip your stencil. So you can rub it a couple times, but just go from the bottom to the top. Now, when you're on the edge, you have to kind of go left to right. And then when you go up, and here's the cool thing is those little chalk dust pieces are going to make it look extra bright if you can rub those onto your black paper. Okay. Now you're going to keep moving across your paper. Don't lift up the stencil yet. And now it'll change to the next color. Now remember, when you're on the edges, rub off to the side. When you're going to the top roofs, you rub straight up. And really push that up into the black paper. And then over to the right on this side. Okay, now keep moving your hand across to steady your paper. And remember, down, up, down, up. Don't rub back and forth or you'll wrinkle your paper. Okay, now here's my scary one because I said, remember this one is really skinny, I might rip it. So I'm gonna be extra careful here not to wrinkle that piece. And now my next one is skinny too. Carefully rubbing that without tearing it. And my last one. All right, now for the moment of truth. Lift off the stencil. Oh, that looks amazing. I love this project, so fun. Okay, we're not done yet because we've got all this space down here. Now the really cool thing is that we don't have to cut a new stencil. We are gonna chalk up the same stencil and we're going to shift it so it looks like a different row of buildings. I'll show you about that in a minute. But for now, move your black paper out of the way, set your stencil back down, and chalk it up again. I recommend using the same colors on the same buildings because otherwise your chalk colors will get all muddy and murky looking if you try to mix them. So again, be careful when you're coloring that to wrinkle your paper. That's when most of my kids have trouble ripping their buildings is if they are chalking it up too fast and then they're going back and forth and then they kind of catch their paper. So just be kind of gentle with it. Get the chalk nice and thick on there with those little crumbles staying on same colors we did before. You can chalk up the whole thing even though we're going to just rub part of it first. We will rub the other parts after. Okay, got it all chalked up, not blowing on it, putting my black paper back in my space, and now instead of putting it right in the middle because that would look silly to have them matching, we are going to shift to the left. So the building that was kind of in the middle, this pink one, is gonna be my first building on the left. And I wanna go down enough so that I'm almost to the bottom, like this space here is almost at the bottom. Or you could do three levels, like three layers, that's up to you, but I'm only gonna demonstrate two levels. So I'm gonna go down a ways, like that. I'm gonna hold it still, and I'm going to rub a little bit of this yellow one over, but then I'm gonna mostly start here with my pink one, and then my orange skinny one, and then the red one. Oh, look at that, I wrinkled it. Lay it down flat, then the yellow one. And it's totally okay if you kind of rub over what you have before, that's gonna look awesome, so don't worry about that. Then I'm going to pick it up. Now you remember I haven't colored, I haven't rubbed off my green or yellow building yet. I am going to line this up so that it matches up with where my last building kind of ended. And now I'm going to rub this side. All right, now let's see how that looks. Oh, it looks like an overlapping skyline. Nice. 
Now, if you look at yours and there's too much black space down here, you could do one more level if you just kind of um, decide how you're gonna shift your buildings and you can put a few here and put a couple here. If there's some big open black spaces, you're like, oh, I really need a building there. You can shift your um, stencil wherever you wanna put it. And then you can add more. You might need to add more chalk, that's up to you. Or the other solution is, if you have a paper cutter, you can slice off the extra black part at the bottom if it's too much, and then just have a, a, you know, a skinnier picture. Now, one more thing I wanna show you is an optional moon. If you have a scrap piece of paper, you could cut out a crescent shape, like the letter C, and you could have a moon and the way you would do this one is you would take white chalk and just add white chalk onto the moon shape. Then you place it in the black sky, wherever your biggest space is. And then you can rub the white onto the black paper. And then when you remove it, it looks kind of like a moon. Nice. All right, and then the last step is really important. You gotta add windows. So you're gonna use your white chalk. And the key here is to keep them nice and straight and kind of like what I would call an array. You know, in math class, when you do multiplication, we talk about an array, like a picture that shows a multiplication table. So for example, if we were gonna show three times four, it would be three, columns and four rows. And this, these are in a nice straight columns and nice straight rows. So that's kind of like an array. That's what I'm gonna do with my windows. So for example, if I start over here, cause I'm left-handed, I like to go this way. Um, I would maybe make one, two, three across, and then I'll just keep those nice and straight and go down as far as I can. Maybe just put one there, one there, and I'm not gonna put one here because this building's overlapping it. Now on the skinny building, I might just put two like that. So I'm gonna finish up my windows in fast forward, and then you can do the same thing on yours, but take as much time as you need. Okay, mine is done. There is my cityscape. I would like you to make sure that your name is on the back. You probably need to use a white piece of chalk or if you have a pencil, that can show up too. You just write your name with your last initial <clears throat> and then also put your teacher's, your teacher code. So you would be a three for 3G. And then if you have, um, Miss Bloomkey, it would be a B, or if you have Miss Stutzman, it would be an S, three S. And then I need you to take a picture of this. If you're a distance learner, you get to keep this at home, but I need to have a picture of it to make sure I can give you points. So take a photo and email it to me at rose at parnassusprep.com. Make sure your teacher's name is in the email and your full name. All right, see you next time.